So here's the deal. A lot of you guys saw my MacBook Air performance test video that I released a couple days ago and some of you are super eager to purchase one for yourself. On paper, the spec sheet for this machine, particularly the new 2020 quad core, seems to be the way to go for many. A lot of you all have private messaged me and left a comment saying you guys want me to do my own testing. In response to Max Tech's video on the thermal issues this new MacBook Air is having and I'm glad to do that for you all. My main goal always is to help you guys out to make a better more informed decision when it comes to purchasing a new MacBook. MacBooks ain't cheap man and especially during these hard times so honestly I won't waste much of your time. Consider this a response to Max Tech's video on his disappointment to the thermal issues found in inside the MacBook Air for 2020. Let's dive straight into some of these results. For the record, I love Max Tech's channel and have nothing but respect for him. Those guys put out some super dank content and are one of my go-tos for deep testing of our beloved machines. The thing I think he missed in his video though is that those issues will likely not be relevant for the main demographic Apple is trying to sell this MacBook to casual users. Because realistically, if you are a professional, no one ever thinks, man, you know what would be amazing for my 8K videos and 3D renders? A MacBook Air. It's just not who it's for. When we as YouTubers do benchmarking tests, we understand the majority of people won't export videos on the daily and likely won't ever need to harness all the power of their machines. It's simply a way to show you guys what each machine is capable of doing just so you have a better idea of what you're dealing with in the event maybe four or five years from now, your needs may change. So I get where he's coming from, but this video will address the countless of individuals who are looking to buy reliable air with reliable performance so without further ado, let's get right into it. Luckily, I have a MacBook Air in each color, so just remember right now from the get-go which is which. From left to right, same order as in my previous performance test, the rose gold will be the base 2019 MacBook Air. The space gray in the middle is the base $999 dual-core MacBook Air, and the silver to the right is the one with the $100 upgrade to the quad-core i5. Got it? So again, pink is 2019, middle space gray is base 2020 dual core, and silver is quad core i5. Okay, so first, I wanted to be pretty consistent here as I am pretty meticulous with my testing. So even before starting the tests, I made sure each machine was juiced up to 100% battery. I don't know, it may or may not be that big of a factor, but I just wanted them to be full capacity to start. I don't know, does that make me weird? Anyway, I shut them all down and turned them all on just to get a fresh start on each. Then, using a combination of Intel Power Gadget and Fanny, dumb name by the way, I see Fanny and imagine some lady's buttocks that is large but definitely not in charge. I wanted to use two just to see if I could get consistency and lessen any variables by just using one. So anyway, at idle, all temperatures are pretty good, the standard stuff, nothing crazy. Now to begin, I wanted to use Safari just to see how it would compare against Chrome since Chrome has been known to crash even my mid-spec 2019 Mac Pro that has 256 gigabytes of RAM with just 4 tabs. That's a joke by the way. I'm sorry if you use Firefox or God forbid Internet Explorer. If you do, something's wrong with you. Then again, Safari is Apple's own software that they developed so you would expect it to be better optimized on their systems. Regardless, I pulled up a single tab and went over to investing.com just because I'm analyzing the market very carefully right now so I know when it's time to sell and make big money. With one tab on Safari, everything appears normal yet again with temperatures hovering around 60 degrees Celsius. The standard stuff, no fans cranking up. Yet. As you'll see with this test, I'll be compounding the load on the computers adding little at a time and making observations. To follow up, I then opened up two additional tabs for a total of three, opening up Facebook and Apple.com and observing. Still pretty simple though, three tabs in and everything is still pretty normal with temperatures still well under 60 degrees Celsius. But now it's time to turn it up a notch and introduce some YouTube to the mix. So Max Tech played a 4K video on YouTube as well, so I wanted to do the same and played my most recent 4K 30fps video on all three devices to bring the total tabs up to 4 and would you believe it, still normal behavior. Temperatures do go up, but only by about 5 degrees Celsius, now bringing the temperatures to pretty much consistently stay above 60 degrees. Now I don't know about you, but I've gotten better at not being those kinds of people that open up 20 tabs at a time. So 4 tabs is pretty standard for me. 
Once again, pretty normal things the average consumer will do. Now it was time to introduce other applications to the mix simultaneously while keeping the YouTube video playing and all the other tabs open so I went over to All Reliable. That's right. Apple TV Plus. There are some pretty decent shows on there by the way. You should check them out if you have the free year of Apple TV. Now doing all of this and temperatures yet again only rose about 2 degrees. Hmm, not at all what I was expecting after watching Max Tech's video. I was expecting this thing to be melting, but nope, not yet. This is only Safari though, so we'll see. We just keep adding more stuff into the mix, including opening up the news app. Again, nothing too pro-ish. I received feedback and you guys wanted to see everyday activity, not benchmarks and not exporting raw 4K videos and stuff of that nature that YouTubers typically do on the daily. As you'll see, still stable and pretty normal, now shooting up to about 70 degrees, but pretty standard stuff when having all this stuff open up at once. Keep in mind that 4K YouTube video is still being played in the background. To conclude, we finally open up my finder, the notes app, and my calculator app. All are pretty benign apps, sure, and at this point, the fans do kick in as can be seen from the fanny widget, but temperatures still well under 80 degrees and not at all reaching the 100 degrees blazing hot temperatures. Okay. Don't worry, for Chrome, I did a lot more and did the same test, but ended up adding more and more and more, just to finally reach that 100 degree mark. I closed everything out and restarted each computer to get a fresh start and leave them out chilling for a good 3 minutes to let all those temperatures stabilize and go back to normal so that all are under 40 degrees at idle. I did the same thing basically only with Chrome this time and to my surprise, nothing extreme. Nothing out of the ordinary. Sure, slightly hotter because it's Chrome, but with the oneinvesting.com tab, temperatures were hovering around 60 degrees. Could be better, of course, but pretty standard for Chrome. Then again, did the two other tabs being Facebook and Apple.com, and with both being thrown into the mix, the temperatures, uh, dropped? They were below 55 degrees for the newer model, so rest assured, even Chrome with 3 to 5 tabs shouldn't cause you too many issues. Now, playing the same Mac Mini video, remember, a 4K 30fps video, and still under the 60 degree mark. Pretty interesting stuff, but we don't want to end there. I did find that the quad core was a tiny bit hotter, getting 4 to 5 degrees hotter. We then add Apple TV into the mix with the previous four tabs still up and running, including the video and temperatures are now reaching 70 degrees Celsius, with the quad core still being about 5 degrees hotter this time. We now add news, the calculator app, the finder, and notes, and yet again, wait for it, the dual core 2020 model hovers around 65 degrees, with the quad core now approaching 75 degrees. While they are getting hotter, keep in mind all the MacBook Airs are doing at this point, and keep in mind this computer was not made for professionals in mind. So I'm sure most people will top out here with about these many applications open at once, if that many at all. But I wasn't done. I wanted more. I wanted the system to reach the 100 degree mark and get those fans kicking into overdrive. We keep my 4K YouTube video playing, open up Hulu on a Chrome tab, isolate it, and then play regular show. Then open up Netflix and play some show. I forgot which one it was, it was on my recommended. But yeah, four streaming platforms, Hulu, YouTube, Apple TV Plus, and Netflix, plus all those other apps still open and look, close to hitting 100 degrees but not quite. The quad core again is noticeably hotter by about 10 degrees, but who is really going to have these four streaming websites open all at once in conjunction with everything else I have open, like seriously. I ended up adding and opening up my Finder and iTunes or the music app or whatever you want to call it, blasting music and now we're talking. The dual core is now approaching 90 degrees while the fans are now starting to be much more audible on the quad core nearing the 100 degree mark. After that, just to quickly recap on my last video on the performance test. I closed everything down and let them chill out again just to get their temperatures back down. In Max Tech's video, he showcased some pro level applications like Final Cut and I think Photoshop. So I did the same thing and of course, just as expected and just like in my prior video, the temperatures immediately shot up. I opened up Final Cut, Logic, Compressor, and Photoshop. All apps to be known to be pretty demanding on the processor and taking up much more RAM than your typical web browser. I then performed the Bruce X test to export this small clip out 
out, and this is when the fans really cranked up on all three, as is expected on an air. As it's been exposed, Apple did not connect the heatsink to the fans on the new MacBook Air, so the 2020 model suffered severely with this Bruce X export test, and those fans were chugging along. But honestly, guys, I'm going to stand by my claim and respectfully disagree with Max Tech on this one. As per my testing on my previous video, the benchmarks on the quad core are still surpassing the dual core despite it being 5 to 10% hotter as compared to the base dual core model when performing everyday tasks. Of course, all of this is switched up when you begin to work with pro apps, but again, my rebuttal here is that most people who buy the Air typically know what they will probably use it for, just email, YouTube, Netflix, social media, and things of that sort pretty benign stuff. It's when you get to pro apps where the 2020 models, in particular, the quad core begin to overheat. But as stated, the benchmarks are still higher. It would be way different if because of the thermal throttling, the quad core underperformed against the dual core. That would be embarrassing on Apple's part. Unless the audible fans are that big of a deal for you, and unless for some reason you happen to work with your MacBook Air on your lap the whole time, then it's best to choose the i3 since the audible noise is much lower and the temperatures typically run cooler. But most people I know don't mind the noise and most work on a desk while using their MacBook anyway. Additionally, the quad core i5 will future proof you way more than the dual core i3 if you plan to have this laptop for five years plus or more. In the end, the numbers are there. I always say, numbers don't lie. I even performed the same test basically off camera and got pretty much the same results. I just wanted to verify that what I did was accurate. So, Max Tech does offer some pretty important points. Namely, this MacBook Air is having a problem that is reminiscent of when the 15 inch MacBook Pro had overheating issues with the i9. The chassis of the Air is just too small, and the fact the heatsink isn't connected will ensure your system run hotter, without a doubt. But for most people, I think the $100 is still worth the upgrade and still stand by my claim. Best yet, if you're a student and have your school ID, you get a $100 discount on your MacBook Air, effectively granting you a free upgrade to the 1.1 GHz quad-core i5 since the total will be $999 with the student discount and opting for the quad-core. But listen, the i3 should be enough for probably 80 to 85% of you. If you're going to use an Air for emails, for Facebook, for Microsoft Word, stick with the dual-core i3. Trust me, that is way more power than you'll ever need. But if you want to future proof yourself better, or maybe later on in the future you think you might do some light video editing, occasional gaming, or pursue a hobby that requires computer hardware, the $100 upgrade to the quad core i5 is still a fantastic option. And I do want to end this video letting you guys and Max Tech know that this response was more of an add on to his video. I love his content and he did provide some stellar points. Professionals wanting to upgrade to the i5 quad core, beware. But for the average consumer, weigh out your options. You saw my temperatures and to me, they were more than adequate and if anything above normal temperatures for performing everyday tasks on chrome or safari but i'd love to be part of the discussion drop a comment and if you need additional help choosing out the best imac or macbook to the best configuration that best suits your needs please do not hesitate to shoot me a dm i'll be more than happy to reply back when time permits i hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it i'll catch you all on my next one peace